Oh, hello, New Hampshire. Hello. You think it was easy to get up here tonight? It wasn't. I almost said they'd understand if I didn't show up. This crowd would not be happy. Got a lot of people outside. They couldn't get in. But, but this was a, a beautiful trip, actually. It's beautiful. It's a great place. And uh, we've had tremendous luck here, as you know. They uh, did a big favor for me in uh, 2016. You remember that? We came in and we blasted it. But I'm thrilled to be back in the great state of New Hampshire. As you know, earlier this week, we had a really monumental, I would say monumental, right? It was the biggest ever. There's never been anything quite like it, not even close. I think it was double. It was double the best ever. But it was a win in Iowa, great place, incredible people. You know, the people there are great. They're, great. they're great all over our country. They feel the same way. They want to make America great again. It's a very simple thing to think, right? We want to make America. Remember when Biden goes around all over, we're going to fight MAGA. I want to ask him, Joe, do you know what MAGA means? Because he doesn't have any idea. It's called Make America Great Again, right? But we were the first ever to get over that 50 percent. We actually had 52 percent, and uh, that's never been done. And they were saying we might hit 40, and 40 was really monumental. That was big, and we got 52. And it's time for the Republican Party, frankly, to come together and to unify. We have to unify. And Focus all of our resources and energy and effort on defeating crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country. And the radical left Democrats this November. We have to do it with your vote six days from now. Six days. Here we're, it's starting, right? Those two great places, they got it going. We just left Iowa. Now we're going to soon be leaving New Hampshire with a big, vic I think, a big victory, right? Based on the polls that just came out 20 minutes ago, it's going to be a big victory. I can tell you that. Then we're going to crush right after that. We're going to win, and we're going to crush Crooked Joe. And then, you know, we're going to put America first, and we're going to start drill, drill baby drill, and we're going to do a lot of things. I mean, we had the safest border in history. We're going to make it the safest border in history again. As you probably know, Nikki Haley is counting on Democrats to think of that. She's a damn well, they want to run against her. They're putting a lot of Democrats because they want to, they don't want to run against me. In 2016, they lost, and in 2020, I did much better than we did in 2016. Uh, bad things happen. I don't want them turning off their cameras. Bad things happen. You know, when they hear that, oh, we have to immediately turn off our cameras. But you know, you know what happened. But uh, we're not going to let that happen again. But we did. We did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016. Nikki Haley is counting on Democrats and liberals to infiltrate your Republican primary. By the way, what's that all about? You're the only one. You're the only one. That's Sununu, I guess, right? The most overrated governor. Though he's not. He's no longer a popular governor. You know, this guy. Just so you understand, I was never a fan of his, to be honest. He could have run for the Senate. He could have won. It would have given us the majority. But no, he wanted to run for president. And he did run for president. You know, I beat him in your state, New Hampshire. I beat him by 44 points. I was leading him. 44 points. But he ran for president. He just didn't have the courage to say he was running. You know, he ran. He I never saw a guy do more television than he did. And in the end, he had about two points. He had, I think, one point more than Ada Hutchinson, OK? <laughs> you know? But uh, why does he allow Democrats to vote in the Republican primary? Why does he allow independents and liberals to vote in the — this is about Republicans, and then we'll bring them in as they start to realize what a great job we're doing, right? But why does he allow Democrats to come in and vote? It's ridiculous. But despite that, we're leading by a lot. And I think it's going to be a little bit like Iowa. We were leading by a lot. And then we broke this record, and some people were surprised, but I wasn't because I saw the enthusiasm. We have the same enthusiasm here. And then we go to Nevada, where I think we're up 94 points. Okay? In fact, in fact, I hear that we're up 100 points because uh, Ron DeSanctimonious just dropped out of the race, and he's the only one that tried to challenge us. And he just dropped out of the race. He just announced it. They're dropping out. Well, wait a minute. You might have missed. <laughs> this can only happen. 
I meant when I say he dropped out of the race, he dropped out of the race in Nevada. Oh. <laughs> no, I was wondering, and I, I sort of checked myself. I, I, I thought the applause was a little bit, a little bit strong. No, no, he checked out. That's very funny. I'm glad I caught it. Because they're going, we have breaking news. Ron DeSantis. Maybe I should have left it that way. What the hell? It's going to happen anyway. We should have left it. That way, the fake news would have been about four, four days early. That's all. No, no, that's fine. No, I just thought, you know, I just thought that the emotion was so great. I said, I know it's great. He just dropped out of Nevada. But it's not that big a deal, football player, great football player. No, he just dropped out of Nevada, so he was the only one that challenged us there, and that meant, because we were up by, I think, 94, 95 points. It's that bad. And uh, so now we've got 100% of Nevada. And then a lot of people think South Carolina is next, it's Nevada. And then we go to South Carolina, where we're leading Nikki, I think, by like 60 points. I mean, it's pretty, that tells you a lot. How do you lose your own state, your governor of a state, and you're down by 60? I don't think that's going to change. She's a, uh, he's a bird brain. It's bird brain, I don't know. That's a tough, that's a tough one. It's bird brain, but one of those things, isn't it? Welcome to the world of politics. The people behind Nikki Haley are pro-amnesty, they're pro-China, they're pro-open borders. You know, she wants open borders, don't kid yourself. Pro-war, and they're pro-Biden, because those are the people that are sending them. Biden people are coming in. They have Biden stuff, and they're coming in to register and to to vote in your primary. It is crazy. You got to get that changed. We're going to take it. If we weren't popular, how do you win where everybody's allowed basically to come and vote? The enemy, which let's say in this case, until it's over, because you know the whole country is going to unify by its success. When we're successful, the country is going to be unified. We are going to unify our country through success. But right now, we don't want Democrats voting in the Republican primary, Sununu. Sununu ought to do that instead of walking around with Nikki Haley and her polls go down every day. The radical left Democrats are supporting Nikki Haley because they know she's much easier to beat than Trump. And you know what? If she weren't, they wouldn't be doing it. But you know, they're great disinformation people. Misinformation, disinformation. You know, they're almost the same, but not quite. But let's not go into definitions right now. They're very close, actually. A lot of people still don't understand it, but I give them credit for both. But they are, they are literally, what they're doing is they're, they will say, we want to run against Trump so bad. In the meantime, they're sending all their people to vote for Nikki Haley. The reason they do that is they want to run against Nikki Haley. Usually when they say something, it's the opposite, okay? And they're very good at it, too. They're good at cheating in elections and disinformation. She runs around with one poll from three months ago. It's three months old. In fact, the paper is frayed on the outside from her holding it up so much. You had to go. And it said she's 17 points up on Biden. But I'm the one that's up on Biden. That's the only poll she had that was good. And she's used that thing, and Fox puts it on. They all put it on. She's used it. They don't use the new polls where she's losing. She's losing to everybody. But we're winning to everybody. Just came out. We're 11 points up in Michigan. We're nine points up in Pennsylvania. These are states that are hard. I won them in 2016. Again, I did much better with those states in 2020. But we think of it. We're 11 points up in Michigan. You know why the auto workers know that Biden sold them out? All the cars are going to be made in China based on what Biden did. How do you like the? What did he say? <laughs> now this is a, an audience with all those cameras back there. I'm sure they got. I'm sure that that's all right. That's a true fan. Who did that? Who said that? Let me see the hand. Oh, he's a tough-looking cookie. He can get away with it. You know what? He can get away with it, right? It's all right. You know, they're probably saying to their viewers that we'd like to excuse ourselves for that. In Iowa, nearly 50% of Haley voters said they plan to vote for Biden in November. Now, that means that she's like a Democrat. I actually think she might go to the Democrat Party. And I know very well, you have to stand... I, I really put her there because I wanted to make the lieutenant governor of South Carolina, Henry McMaster, he's fantastic, one of the best governors. And by the way, he really closed his, you know, he, he took care of COVID. He got rid of it. He had it open. Ron had his, his uh, Florida was closed for, and strongly closed. And he loved Fauci, just so you understand. I see where oh, I was against Fauci. Yeah, like about six months later, he loved Fauci. And his state was totally closed. Henry McMaster truly 
He kept that state open, South Carolina, one of the great successes. Uh, if you look at South Dakota, if you look, I could name you seven or eight states that really did a job. They really did. But I made him the governor. He went from lieutenant governor to governor. That was about 90 percent of what I wanted with making her, putting her into the United Nations. And I put her in. She can't negotiate. I'm telling you, she can't negotiate. She's a lousy negotiator. Other than that, she's wonderful. She's a wonderful person. <laughs> But if she wins, Biden wins. And I'm telling you that. And that's why they're sending all of these Democrats in to run. And it's crazy. And you got to change that rule, that law that allows Democrats to come down. And also this one-day deal where they can walk in and just sign up right away. Voter registration. you got to change this stuff, Sununu. Sununu's not doing his job. I'll tell you what. I think Sununu is right now unelectable in New Hampshire, OK? I think he's unelectable. And, you know, he has a long history, because his father actually treated me very well. I don't know what happened to the father. He's letting his son do this stuff. I don't know what happened to the father, but the father was okay. He was treating me pretty good. Actually, at the end, when I was winning everything, he treated me perfectly. Before, at the beginning, it wasn't that way. But uh, he's got to straighten out his son, because they have to straighten out voting in your state. And if they don't straighten it out, you're going to have some very unpleasant surprises. But it's not going to happen with us because we're leading by a lot, despite the fact they have Democrats voting because of Nikki Haley. So if you want a nominee who is endorsed by all of the rhinos, globalists, never Trumpers, and crooked Joe Biden's biggest donors, you know, her biggest donors are backers of crooked Joe, of crooked Joe. Is Bill Gates endorsing? Oh, and then when he comes to the White House to kiss my ass, I got to remember that. He's always coming. Hello, I'm Bill Gates. Hello, Bill. How you doing, Bill? What's up? <laughs> no, but if you like all of those things, including the rhinos, uh, then she's your candidate, I'll tell you. If you want to defeat the radical left Democrats and save America, you vote for President Trump, and we're going to do it very quickly. We had our time. We're going to do it very quickly. <laughs> Primary day, most importantly, is this Tuesday, January 23rd. It's amazing how it's upon us, right? It's upon us. We're going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. And remember this, we had the greatest economy. We had, we had a tremendous success. Think of all the things we did, the best border. You never would have had Ukraine being attacked by Russia. It wouldn't have happened. I get along with Putin. I get along with Zelensky. What a, what a horrible thing. And when you see the real number of lives, it's, it's staggering. And all of those cities are wiped out. I mean, they're, they're obliterated. You know, when they say we're fighting, the cities are obliterated. It's what a sad thing. You never would have had the attack on Israel. Would have never, ever happened. You remember, Iran was broke under me. They were broke. They didn't have the money to do that. They're the funders of terror. And they didn't have the money. China is now looking to go into Taiwan. And I think they're just, you know, just looking. But they're a little concerned because they hear I'm coming down the road and they would have never done it. They would have never done it. You know, the only thing we have a stock market that's going. And the reason the stock market's OK is because they all think I'm going to win because the polls have us so far ahead. And if I don't win, I really believe you're going to have the you're going to have a Great Depression, just like 1929, because that's where it's headed. All the information you need is available at nh.donaldjtrump.com. OK, so get out and vote. We got to vote. And we have to win by a lot. Don't believe the polls. It has us winning by a lot over Nikki, over everybody. I mean, Ron is in fifth or sixth place. What the hell happened to Ron? Does anybody know what happened to I think I happened to Ron. You know what? I made Ron. I got him elected. I got him the nomination first, and I got him elected. Remember, he was running against a guy that turned out to be a crackhead, unfortunately. But. At the time, he was a very popular guy and, you know, good-looking guy. They used to say he's going to be a president of the United States within 12 years. He's going to be a president of the United States. That didn't work out too well, I don't think. But uh, he didn't think he could beat him. But I got him a He was down. It, it, was, it was over. I mean, it was over. You know, Florida. And he came to see me, tears in his eyes. And he needed my endorsement. I said, Ron, you're so far down that if I were George Washington and Abraham Lincoln put together, I couldn't get you elected. He said, no, you're very popular in Florida. If you endorse me. And I endorsed him, and he went up like a rocket ship. And he ended up winning his thing. He, he had no chance. He was down like 30 or 40 points. And in, uh, like instantly, he went up. He won by like 20. He went from being down 40 to winning by 20, all in two days or three days. 
And then he said, but I can never beat this new guy because he's a hot, he's a hot guy. Him and Stacey Abrams, they were the two hot people in Georgia, right, in, in the country. He was the hot male. She was the hot female. She was going to go great. But I got Brian Kemp elected. It wasn't for me, Brian Kemp. Well, it's one of those things. <laughs> but I got Brian Kemp elected. I worked my ass off for Brian Kemp, and we got him elected. I got him the nomination first because he was in fifth place, and I got him the nomination. I endorsed him. And he's done a good job in Georgia in many ways, except with the election, he's done a good job. I mean, with the election, not a good job. But he's done a good job. And then I got, I also got uh, Ron. I said, Ron, you're going to make it. I'm telling you. He said, no, this guy is, I don't know. I said, well, I didn't get you the nomination for you to have that attitude. And we did two or three rallies with massive numbers of people. And I said, I'm telling you, you're going to make it. And he even started believing it. And he ended up making it. He won by 90,000 votes. And uh, the rest is history. <laughs> it was, there was not a lot of loyalty. Four years later, they said, will you run against the president? Remember? And he said, I have no comment. I said, he has no comment. No comment means he's running to smart people. A smart person would say that means, you know, a lot of my people backstage that get paid a lot of money. Sir, he's a Republican. He wouldn't do that. He said, oh, yes, he would. He would. When they say no comment, so we hit him early and hard. They said, please, sir, don't hit him that hard. Why? He's a Republican. You know, they said, I said, I don't care if he's a Republican or not. And we hit him hard. By the time he joined the campaign, he was pretty much decapitated. But he has not done... He has not done a good job in campaigning, but I'm sure he's a nice fellow. I think he's going to be gone. I think all of those applause, that was funny. But I think, he's, I think you can probably save him for about a week or so, because I think he's going to be gone. He's in fifth. He just dropped out. Yeah. Well, we're going to hear that. I suspect now. Well, I hear he's going to drop out pretty soon, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, may God bless him. Do you agree? May God bless him. He's going to need it. One of the most important issues in this race is which candidate can rescue the American economy and save the American dream. So I had the greatest economy in history. Your gasoline was at numbers that you've never seen. Did you know, here's another thing for Sununu to work on. Do you know that New Hampshire has the highest energy costs in the whole United States? You're the highest energy cost, single highest. New England is the highest area. But you have the highest energy. That's because of Sununu. There's no reason for that. It's because of Sununu. <laughs> I mean, how you, these guys, how they get away with it, it's amazing. But you have record low unemployment. This is what you had. And for African Americans, Hispanic Americans all over the country, Asian Americans, young Americans, old Americans, veterans. Veterans love Trump. Look what I've done. Where is Al? Is Al around here? Where is Al? Al Baldessaro. Boy, we have such veteran support. Where is Al? He's back in Florida. What the hell happened? Get him back to New Hampshire, will you please? But what a great guy. But we did great for the uh, veterans. And as you know, we're going to build a big veterans hospital here. You're the only state that doesn't have one. We're going to build a big one. So we're going to build a big one. But we had record low poverty rates. We're talking countrywide. We had record low poverty rates, record high incomes, the highest incomes, record incomes ever anywhere. And we increased the typical American families take home pay by over $6,000. The Democrats were $5,000 negative. We were $6,000 positive. And that's without inflation, if you think about that, without inflation, virtually Everybody, I think I can take the word virtually off, but everybody was better off under Trump. And you compare it to this administration, it's just not even a contest. That's why the polls are so good, because there's a comparison. You, they could never be this good, but there's a comparison when you look at all the horrible mistakes, the Afghanistan disaster, but you look at all of the horrible... You notice the way the press buries that so fast? You don't hear about it anymore. You don't hear about it. But everything they do turns out to be not so good. I, don't, I can't think of one thing they've done properly or well. And the border is the worst of all, probably. No, the, I, I, no Afghanistan, to me, is just so bad. Because it represented such weakness and such. We were going to leave. I was the one that got it all set, but we were going to keep Bagram, the air base. You know, it's one of the biggest air bases in the world. Not because of Afghanistan, but because it's one hour away from where China makes its nuclear missiles, okay? And that was going to be, we're going to keep that. I wouldn't give that up. It cost billions and billions of dollars to build many, many years ago. And it's perfectly located for China. 
And you know who has it now? China. China has it. They took — they left the lights on. They left the dogs behind, by the way. A lot of people say, what happened to the dogs, for you dog lovers? The Democrats left the dogs behind. And uh, typically, the Taliban does not love dogs. You know that, right? They're not big — they're not big fans of the dogs, right? So you know what — you know what happened. I stand before you today as the only candidate who is up to the task of saving America from every single Biden disaster — and there are a lot of them — starting on day one. You know, this guy would go to the beach. One of his many consultants said to him, you look great, sir, in a bathing suit. <laughs> you go to the beach and show that body and the American public, especially the women, they're going to vote for you in droves. <laughs> they're going to vote for you in droves, sir. And then they see him walking through the sand. He wasn't able to get his feet up. It wouldn't — the sand was — but worse is he couldn't lift that — it's nine ounces. I actually had it. It's nine ounces. It's meant for a child to lift up for Grandpa, you know? So a child, a little child, a beautiful little child like that one right there could lift that sucker up like nothing. Joe is <laughs> — I don't know why somebody, with all the Secret Service — why doesn't somebody move that chair for him? Because it doesn't look good. You know, they are really light. You know, you could — it's like a feather, right? But if he would have gone to the beach, it would have been okay if he left everything that we did alone. But he didn't do that. He took a lot of — like, remain in Mexico. What's wrong with that? Remain in Mexico. You think that was easy to get? I got it. They, nobody thought it was even possible. I said to the president, you have to do it. And he said uh, — and I got along very well with him. He's a great guy. He's a socialist, but you can't have everything. But he's a — we got along — you know what? We, we got along very well, actually. But I said, you got to do it. You got to — you got to give us 28,000 soldiers. You got to have a remain in Mexico policy, and you have to have catch and release in Mexico. You know catch and release? We have catch and release in the United States. I said, we're going to change two words. We're going to change from United States. We're going to deduct one from United States. I'm actually right. Two words, because you have to be careful, because they get you in this. But two words, you're going to bring it down to one. It's going to be Mexico's replacing United States, right? But it's catch and release, and we're going to put them and leave them in Mexico until we vet them and see. Because right now, we have millions of people streaming into our country. It's an invasion. And you take a look at that invasion. They're coming from all over the world, not just South America, not just from Guatemala and Honduras, not just from Mexico. They're coming from all over the world. They're coming from Africa. They're coming from the Congo. We caught the other night, they caught, sold, they caught some people that looked pretty tough. And we thought they were soldiers from the Congo. They weren't. They were prisoners from the Congo. They were prisoners. The good news is they make our prisoners look like sweethearts, okay? These are seriously tough people. So they came in. They're coming in from Africa. They're coming in from Asia. They're coming from all over the Middle East. They're coming from Yemen. Yesterday, they caught four people. They call them Yemenis. That's the country we're bombing right now. And the one in charge of the bombing is sitting in a hospital with a laptop on his stomach, like a child would play war games, right, with a laptop. And he was missing in action for five days. He was the Secretary of Defense. He was missing in action for five days. One thing I'll say about Biden, he's very loyal. He never fires anybody. <laughs> I sort of had the opposite. I am more loyal than him, but I was the opposite. I used to fire a lot of people because they, if they didn't do a job, they got fired. And it sort of gave them an incentive. But he never fires anybody. When you have Afghanistan and you don't fire one person, not one general — I got rid of Comey. I fired Comey because he was no good. He was terrible at the FBI. And it was not an easy firing, either. But if we didn't do that, we probably wouldn't be standing here talking to you right now, because they, they had bad things in mind. They had bad, bad things in mind. But this guy never fires anybody, no matter how bad they are. Look at our — look at what's happening with our airports, and the, it's a disaster. And boot edge edge, you know, boot edge edge? You know, years ago, I said, how do you pronounce that damn name? And they said, boot edge edge, the word edge edge. That's the way it's pronounced, booted edge. He ain't doing too good a job. Those airports are bad. If people get a plane that's on time, it's like a miracle, right? It's like, did you know that I actually got out two weeks ago, I got on time? But these planes are sometimes two days late. It's uh, the worst it's ever been. There's never been anything like it. And he's supposed to be one of the hot candidates for president. I don't think that's going to work out. I don't — do you think Pocahontas is going to run again? <laughs> it's your next door now.
Somebody said, what's the best of your nicknames? I said, I don't get into that because so many of them are now friends of mine. So I like, they said, could you do me a favor? Don't do that to me anymore. I could give you a lot of them. A lot of good Republicans have nicknames, and, you know, during the primaries, right? But they disappeared. But I think one of the better ones is uh, Pocahontas because they said she was of Indian blood. Her mother said her cheekbones were high and therefore she's an Indian, okay? She got away with a lot, right? She got jobs because of it. She went to college because of it, good colleges. And way they said, how the hell did she ever get into those colleges? She got in because she was, according to her, an Indian. That knocked out her career pretty fast, too, didn't it? As soon as I get back in the White House, I will quickly end Joe Biden's inflation catastrophe. We will stop his wasteful spending. We will terminate his Green New Scam. And we will, as I said, drill, baby, drill. We're going to drill, baby, drill. And you can bank on this because it's easy. Despite your governor, he should have been able to do it himself. We will cut New Hampshire energy prices in half, and we will do it very, very quickly. New Hampshire, your prices are going to be cut. And they're going to be cut very substantially. We can get your energy down to less than half substantial. I'm going to focus on And it's not only here. Massachusetts, all of New England has energy prices that are double. Some places triple other places in the U.S. And that shouldn't be happening. That shouldn't be happening. And that's why you need good governors. Well, Joe Biden is pushing the largest tax hike in American history, which he is. I will make... The Trump tax cuts, the largest ever, larger than Reagan's. I'm going to make them permanent. We have to make them permanent. If, if the Democrats get in, they're going to let that float. You know, it comes due in a year, less. And they're going to let it float. Your taxes will go up approximately four times. Would you mind paying four times more than you're paying right now? You would not be happy, right? She's a good Trump fan, this one, right? When I see a Trump sign 2020, oh, she's got a 2020. Because you remember, because you're not going to forget. I know what that means. You're not going to forget. Thank you. Thank you, darling. I appreciate it. Instead of cutting your taxes, Nikki Haley and Ron DeSanctimonious supported a brutal 23% national sales tax. How do you like that idea? You know who that affects? The middle class and poor people. A poor person is going to pay a 23% tax. A poor person. Forget about middle class. A poor person is going to pay a 20 And a rich person, that's a great deal for them. It's a great deal for them, but that's what they're pushing, a 23% national sales tax. That's just one of the many positions that they take that makes them, in my opinion, completely unelectable. They have many opinions. They have many things that make them unelectable, but the 20 — you don't even hear about the 23% tax. I don't know if anybody in the room — but you're going to hear about it a lot over the next five days because that's what they want. They want to knock out your Social Security. They want to lift up the age to 70 or more. She wants to lift it to 77. Is anybody thrilled about that? You're getting ready to pick up your check. You're going to get tired. I can understand. I should be there, too. What the hell do I need this for? Right? I could be there, too. Actually, according to her, I'd be very close to receiving my... I mean, I'm just... Believe it or not, I don't feel... I feel like I'm about 35 years old. I actually feel better now than I did 30 years ago. Tell me, is that crazy? I feel better now. And I think cognitively, I'm better than I was 20 years ago. I don't know why. I said, doctor, you know, Doc Ronnie, right? Ronnie, do you know Ronnie? Ronnie Jackson? I said, should I take a cognitive test? Because for a while, in the way, they were saying, this guy is so brilliant, he wants to take over the world. The next day, and that wasn't working. This guy is like, unbelievable, the job he's doing. We have to stop him. He's a genius. That wasn't working. Then they said, this is one of the dumbest human beings ever. And that wasn't working, but I didn't like that one as much. I mean, that was bad. So I asked Doc Ronnie, who is, as you know, the White House doctor for Obama, for Trump. I mean, great doctor. He's also an admiral in the Navy, highly respected admiral. Now he's a congressman in Texas. I asked him, Doc Ronnie, should I take a test? By the way, the press would often ask him, who's in the best health? Who's better, Trump? Trump or, well, I, I don't even want to mention Biden. I don't want to mention Trump or Biden. Remember when he said, I'm going to take him to the back of the barn? <laughs> you know what, with him, you know what I'd have to do? I'd go like this. <sighs> Down goes Biden. Down goes Biden. But if I say it, here's the difference. Everyone thought it was so nice when he said, remember he used to say, I would take him to the back of the barn. 
Do you remember, he used to say, everybody at the press, the fake news back there, look at all those cameras, the fake news, they used to go like, oh, that's terrible that I would. So I made the, I made the mistake of saying, oh, really? He'll take, I'll take him. I'll knock him so hard, he'll never understand what the hell happened. He'll, he'll be out of space. They said, isn't that terrible that I, it was okay for him to say it. When I said it once, it was like a massive nightmare. But anyway, now he talks. But they asked Doc Ronnie, who's better, Barack Hussein Obama? Remember Rush Limbaugh? He used to go, Barack Hussein Obama. He would scream the word Hussein. I wonder why he was doing that. But he would scream the word. But he, I'd say, so who's in better health? They would actually ask, the media would ask, who's in better health, President Obama or President Trump? And he would say, President Trump, 100%. In fact, he said if he didn't eat so much junk food, he'd be around for 200 years. He said that. That's Ronnie Jackson of Texas. And then when he left, he retired, and he ran for Congress, and he won, I think, by 48 points. He was very popular in Texas. He's a great congressman. He's doing a really good job. But uh, I did say, what about a cognitive test? He said, well, you know, it's not that easy. You know, the, let me tell you, and it's taken at Walter Reed, which, by the way, is a great place, unbelievable doctors. They see it all. They see all these people come in with the worst injuries you've ever seen. You know, they, they're unbelievable. But I said, what about it? Because, you know, when they say that uh, me, cognitively, I mean, I'm up here making a speech with no notes. I got these teleprompters. I haven't started practically reading them yet. Do you think he could do that? He can't do it. He can't read the teleprompters. He can't find the stairs off the damn podium. But, but I said, yeah, well, I'm good at tests, so what's the story? He said, well, the problem is, you know, people will find out. And uh, if you do badly, it's not a particularly good thing. You don't want to have some guy get like, uh, like a disaster. I said, well, is that a hard test? It can be hard. I said, look, I got to take it because I got to shut it up. And I took it, and I aced it. I think it was 35, 30 questions. And let me tell you, you know, they always show you the first one, like a giraffe, a tiger, or this, or that, a whale. Which one is the whale? Okay, and that goes on for three or four, and then it gets harder and harder and harder, and then it's multiplied 3,293 times four, divide by three. They have plenty of tough stuff. But those last 15, 20 questions, I guarantee you Biden couldn't get by number three. I think he'd probably get the whale. You know a test for a president? If you had a little store someplace, like a candy store, would you trust Joe Biden? to run your store while you go off to New Hampshire to find a small hill to go skiing? The answer is, no, no way. But you'd trust Trump. Now, you, But some people would say, I trust Trump in terms of competence, but I don't want him to run away with my damn stuff. You know? <laughs> They'd trust Trump. They give me such a bum rap, these people. They are so bad. They are so bad. But they would trust Trump, but they wouldn't trust Biden. They, they had a thing the other day. What, would you trust him to run your business, okay? Small business, tiny little, tiny little. The, what's the smallest business? What's the easiest? Whatever it is. A lemonade stand. A lemonade stand. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was waiting for that. That's very good. I would say that would get A on the question, right? A lemonade stand. Would you trust Joe Biden to run a lemonade stand while your son leaves for vacation for three days to another nicer, even nicer part of New Hampshire, right? The answer is nobody would trust him. Nobody would trust him. And he's running the country, and he's negotiating with Putin and President Xi, who are very strong, and Kim Jong-un he's negotiating with, who doesn't even want to talk to him. They don't even return his phone calls. They don't respect us. They laugh at us. And we have become a joke. We have become a joke. But we will be a great nation again, and it'll be very quick. Just think of the field day Biden would have with Haley or DeSanctimonious. Take a look at the polls. She's getting killed. And she uses that one poll. I'm telling you, it's filthy dirty. It's like, here, I'm up. She would get killed. But they want her badly. Nikki Haley wants to gut Medicare and Social Security. She says the retirement age of 65 is way too low. She wants it to be 75 or 77. Anybody, you must be about 69. Looks... Actually, he's very, you know what they really want to do? They want to really go after very young people. You know, put it back far enough. You'd fit that bill. You're not going to be happy in 20 years, I can tell you that. 
But while Ron voted three times to raise the age, he actually voted. You know, he's a big Paul Ryan fan. Anybody that's a Paul Ryan fan, you don't want in the Republican Party. Nikki said she wants to raise the retirement age to match the life expectancy, which really means that you're talking about 77 or 78. Is everybody happy with that? I had a feeling you might say that. But you're going to work your entire life. You work all the time, and you earn that. And, you know, we have more liquid gold and wealth under our feet than any other nation. We have more liquid gold, oil and gas, more liquid gold. Well, I just met non-liquid gold. You know where it was? Iowa. It's called corn. They have — it's non-liquid. That's my take. You have more non-liquid gold. They said, what is that? I said, corn. They said, we love that idea. You know, that's a pretty cool thought, isn't it? That's a nickname in its own way, but we came up with a new word for — a new couple of words for corn. Nikki Haley supported Rhino Paul Ryan's 2011 plan to destroy Medicare, the same plan that led the Democrat ads, which was a disastrous ad, showing Republicans wheeling Granny off the cliff. Do you remember that? That was Paul Ryan throwing Granny off the cliff. We're not doing that. We're not taking care of our grannies like that. And speaking of grannies, tomorrow I have a funeral for the mother who was a great woman of Melania, our First Lady and a popular First Lady, former First Lady, First Lady. You could say, they're all saying First Lady, First Lady. It's not First Lady, but a very popular First Lady. And uh, her mother was incredible. And I'm leaving from here, and I'm going to Florida. We're going to have a beautiful service for our beautiful uh, I, we say grandmother because Baron. Nobody took care of Baron. Nobody took care of a child better than she did. She loved Baron so much, and uh, she fed him. She wanted only her food, and he turned out to be very tall. So she, <laughs> she did a very good job with the food, I would say. You know, but but uh, Baron loved her so much. He's having a hard time with that. And Melania loved her so much. So we're going to have a beautiful funeral service for her tomorrow in Florida, in Palm Beach, Florida. A vote for Nikki Haley this Tuesday is a vote for Joe Biden and a Democrat Congress this November, because that's what's going to happen. You can't do it. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote to fire crooked Joe Biden, kick the Biden crime family out of the White House. Did you ever see anything like this? And you know about voter stuff. They rig the election, right? So they rig the election, and they go after the people that are after the ones that rig the election. They don't go after the people that rig the election. We're changing things around a lot. We got to get there. We got to win this election. This is the most important election in the history of our country. Think of it. Do you ever hear where they go after people that rigged it? They rigged the election. Uh, interesting, going into Iowa, they did a poll. I think it was 79 percent of the people think the election was rigged. And you can't have that. that even that thought process, you can't have that. You have, to, you have to have two things so important. You have to have free and fair elections. I mean, we have — they have to be filtered. Ideally, they should be on paper, all paper, same-day voting, and voter ID, right? Voter ID. You don't have voter ID. Why do the Democrats fight voter ID? They have voter ID. They have ID on everything. You buy a loaf of bread, you have ID. You, everything to get into a store. But they don't want it for one reason, because they cheat. They want to cheat. They want no — oh, you have to see, when you say — all right, let's do a plan. We'll start off with voter ID. We don't want any voter ID. That means there's only one reason for that. They want to cheat. So we have to turn it around, but we have to win this election. We got to win this election. And you have to get out. You know, the big thing, and I, I, I said this till we were all blue in the face. I said this last week in Iowa. We were leading by a lot. We were leading by, like, numbers almost like we got. Actually, we got more than even we thought. But, you know, setting records. But I said, don't believe the polls. You got to go out. We need big margins. And look how strong that looked. Because we have to set the tone for November. We have to let them know we're coming. And, you know, there's a point at which they can't cheat. And we have to put ourselves in the position where it's so big that they can't do it. Because they cheat automatically. And they've done it for years. They've done it for years. And look what we have out of it. We have open borders where millions of people are pouring in. We have the Afghanistan disaster. We have military going woke. Our military is so great. Don't worry about our military. It's the leaders on the top. They'd love to take it. But it's not going to happen. You know, as you know, we defeated ISIS, 100 percent of ISIS, in three months. 
People said it would take four years. We had the, we had the most unbelievable plan that we did. And General Raisin Cane. Did you ever hear of General Raisin Cane? You know that story, right? General Raisin Cane, what's your name, sir? He goes, he looks at me and I go, General, what's your name? He says, Cane, sir, Cane. What's your first name? Raisin. I said, what? My first name is Raisin, sir. I said, your name is Raisin Cane. Your name is Raisin Cane. I'm going to love you, Raisin Cane. This, this is what... And he knocked him out in three months. We knocked him out. It's supposed to take four years, five years. They said we couldn't even do it. Too slippery. They weren't too slippery. Uh, we have the greatest military in the world, but we're not allowed to use it, and we don't let our great people do it. But we knocked out 100% of ISIS. We got rid of al-Baghdadi, the founder of ISIS. We knocked him out. Remember Conan, the dog, Conan. He was not happy when he saw that dog coming at him at 50 miles an hour. He growling, but Conan was great. Conan almost got electrocuted, remember? Almost got electrocuted, but Conan was amazing. We gave Conan a medal, and uh, Salamani, the, the king of death, he had more. Uh, he loved the roadside bombs. He was the real developer of the roadside bomb. He killed many of our soldiers, many people all over the world he killed, but we got rid of a lot of bad people, and uh, Iran was broke, so they couldn't do anything. That's why you didn't have terror then. You know, we had no terror, zero, for four years. And I wanted to talk two years in, three years in, three. I wanted to talk about it, but I don't want to talk about it. And then the next day, something happens, right? I didn't want to jinx myself. We had no terror. After four years, I talk about it all the time now. We had a terror ban. We had a travel ban. And people said, oh, we don't want a terror ban. Oh, really? You want to let people come in for bad? We didn't have that. We got upheld in the Supreme Court. What I wanted, we had no terror. Think of that. No terror for a period of four years, zero. And we also had another thing. Last week, they had uh, numbers come out. And these numbers are hard to believe, even for me. But in 2019, our year, we had no terrorists coming into the country. As soon as Biden took over, we have record number of terrorists. So all those people you see come in in the invasion, and it is an invasion, and many of them happen to be all male from 18 to 25 years old, perfect age for a soldier. 27,000 from China. Think of that. Are they building an army within our country? Could that be possible? Okay, could that be possible? Coming in from Yemen, coming in from all over the Middle East, coming in from places you really don't want to have too many people coming in. We have to be careful. Uh, but what they're doing is a horrible, horrible thing. You can almost predict within a percentile, I would say 100% certain that you're going to have a major terrorist attack in our country because of what they're letting into our country on the southern border. Millions of people are coming in. I believe the number by the time this guy gets out, and we have to get him out, but I believe it'll be 15 to 16 million people. That's bigger than New York State. That's more people than New York State. And these aren't people that, you know, for the most part, look, again, they come from prisons and they come from mental institutions. But they're also people the country don't, countries don't want. They're not sending their best people over. You know, these guys are smart. I know them, the presidents, the dictators, the prime ministers, some of them call themselves prime ministers. But they're very smart people. And they're not sending their hard workers and they're the, you get a lot of people coming into our country that we're not going to want, we don't want. And we're going to have the largest deportation in the history of this country. We have no choice. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. We're not going to allow it to happen. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. Do you know I've been indicted more than Al Capone? Did you ever hear Al Capone? Probably the greatest mobster of them all. If he had dinner with this very handsome guy in the brown shirt, nice shirt, if he had dinner with him, if you smiled the wrong way at Al Capone when you had dinner, he would have you killed probably within 20 minutes after the dinner. He got indicted less than me. And they indicted me, you know, for, uh, I said the election. I said the election was rigged. I said the numbers. Were, well, let me tell you something. From 2016, we still have Democrats there. By the way, do you see the way they're backing off? Now? No, no, no. I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was, They don't want any part of it. 
The whole system is rigged, and we're going to change it because we have to go back. We have to go back. So when I get indicted, I'm actually being indicted. If you think about it, I'm being indicted for you. Because never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. I won't let it happen. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way. And I always will be in their way. We're thrilled to be joined tonight by the chairman of the Portsmouth Republican Committee, who's been so fantastic, Alan Forbes. Where is Alan? I hope I've done nothing to change your mind on anything, Alan. Or maybe I made it even stronger, right? But I want to thank you. Very good. You've done a fantastic job. And Caroline Levitt. Do you know Caroline? What a dynamo. Where is Caroline? She is, I'll tell you, I watch her just chew people up on television. She's backstage working. She's here, I can tell you that. But, and she's fantastic. And her parents are here, too. And congratulations. You really, really gave us somebody very special. State Representatives Lily Walsh, Kim Bear. Hi. Hi, Lily. Thank you very much. And also a person that just flipped. He just flipped from the sanctimonious to Trump, Scott Wallace. Scott, where's Scott? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Scott. One day, a lot of people are flipping. Oh, boy, I'm getting so many calls. Everyone's joining the group. They're all endorsed. Sir, I'd like to endorse you. Oh, great. Where were you two months ago, right? Where were you uh, six months ago? But we were always in the lead. Actually, I think the warfare, the weaponization, you have many different names where it never happened in our country before, where they go after their political opponents with the DOJ and the FBI. I believe that has made us much more popular. I think I'd be leading by a lot, but I wouldn't be leading by record numbers like nobody's ever seen. They, they've never seen. I believe it's made us much more popular. This backfired in them because they've weaponized the Department of Justice, and that only happens in third world countries, in banana republics. It doesn't happen in our country. And they've done it like never before. I mean, they're doing it with others, and they'll continue to do it until we get them the hell out of office. So we have to be very careful. We have to win. On day one of my new administration, I will seal the border and I will shut down the invasion coming into our country. And that's what it is, just like a military invasion. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in United States history. Did you know that? We built 561 miles of border wall. They like to say, oh, well, you didn't build. If there's a piece of wood laying on the ground that's 60 years old, and we put up a 30-foot high and nine feet deep steel wall, just what the Border Patrol did. Brandon Judd, who's fantastic, just like they designed. They wanted it. I wanted to put up concrete plank. I know a lot about construction. But it wouldn't have been as good, wouldn't have been as strong, and you need a view card to, to see who's on the other side. You know, it does help. You know, they used to drop. We had certain areas where there was solid, you couldn't see. They would throw drugs over the wall, and it would be like 100-pound sack, sacks of drugs. And it would actually kill people. It would hit people on the other side of the wall. Can you believe it? This is what they did. But uh, we built a tremendous amount. But if, we, if there was a piece of wood laying there rotted, and terrible, and or a couple of nails, or anything, they'd say, that's not a new wall. That's a renovation. <laughs> no, no, it's a new wall. They'd throw the wood away. One guy would pick it up. There. It's dissolved. They wouldn't even do that. But we built a uh, tremendous, and that was great. We're going to put up another 200 miles because we needed more. After we did that, we needed more. They go like that. And we had certain areas that we left to get everything through, and then we were going to seal it up. And then we had that unexpected result in the election. And then we heard that Biden wanted to have open borders. And he took the 200 miles, it was all built, ready to be installed, would have taken three weeks. And they sold it, much of it, for five cents on the dollar. They sold it for scrap. And that's the most expensive steel you can buy. We have rebar, concrete, and then wrapped in steel. Very expensive. It's exact. But they sold it for, I understand, five cents on the dollar. It's a, it's a really sad thing. And that's when I knew they really do want open borders. They actually do. And nobody can explain why, but Mexico gave us 28,000 soldiers and millions of dollars, billions of dollars worth of, uh, much more so. You know, they talk about the, wall. Mexico's going to pay. Well, there's no mechanism for that. 
But they paid much more with what they gave us on the soldiers, on the Remain in Mexico stuff, much more than if they had contributed to the construction costs, much more. I want to get that straight, because a lot of people say, oh, Mexico didn't pay. Mexico paid a very big price. Everyone's talking about the border policy, but we don't need new laws and regulations. We just need to utilize the existing. If you look at Tom Holman and Brandon Judd and all of these great guys, they have existing laws are fine. Now, we can do some improvements to them, but we just get it going. But nobody wants to do it. And the Republicans have to be very tough when they negotiate with these people. We'll, we'll be back in there sooner. We'll lead the negotiation, I promise. Nikki Haley will never secure the border. She doesn't believe in the secure borders. She can't believe in them. She actually opposed my border wall. And she was out of, you know, out of all of a sudden she's opposing the wall. I say, what the hell is going on? She's actually opposing it because she's basically, as you see, you know, when you have all of those Democrats coming in to vote. I don't know that she's a Democrat, but she's very close. She's far too close for you. She condemned the things we were doing with the wall, and yet we had the greatest border, the safest border we've ever had. That included, by the way, your human trafficking. We had the lowest numbers in 38 years. One of the ho most horrible things we have going on in the world is human trafficking. You think it's an ancient thing. It's not. And what made it so profitable and so big now is the computer, the, the Internet. The Internet made all of that, and it's mostly in women. They traffic in women. And it's a terrible, terrible scourge. And she didn't fight it like she's supposed to fight it. 2016, she stabbed the Republican Party in the back by siding with Barack Hussein Obama against the Trump travel ban. The Trump travel ban said, we don't want people in our country from certain countries that like blowing up their shopping centers and killing people every week. We don't want them. I'm sorry. And it was upheld in the Supreme Court. Upon taking office, I will terminate every borders policy, open border policy of the Biden administration. They have a tremendous open border. The, the policy they have is so, it's insane. We want open borders. We don't want to vet people that are coming into our country. Who can, who can think this is good? Now, the only thing I can think of, and I believe this, is they want those people, they want to try and get them voting, probably as early as this next election. They're going to... Fix them up. They're going to teach them three, four words of English, and they're going to say, get in there and vote. And we're not going to allow it to happen. We're not going to allow it to happen because there's no other reason they can want this. But I actually said, why would they want to do that? They cheat, so they don't even have to do that. So why do they do So I'm not necessarily a believer because I know how badly they cheat. This is far more than a campaign, what we have. This is the greatest political movement in the history of our country, maybe in the history of any country, to MAGA. And I actually believe, you know, do you ever see these guys? Well, you know, MAGA only represents about 52%. I think that MAGA represents 90 or 92% of the Republican Party. I do. I had a poll fairly recently. I saw a, a poll. Uh, how do you like Trump? And I got the highest number in the history of the party. And you know who second was? Ronald Reagan. I was at 92%. Reagan's at 87%. I was at 92%. And then I hear these fake people back here that, well, you know, the, the parties don't really want either one of them. I think they want me. They don't want Biden. But I think they do want me. I was at the highest number ever. Think of what that would be like in 30, 40 years from now, if it goes like it's supposed to, right? They even like, I won't mention because they're Republicans, but they did a rotten job as president. They got us into the Middle East. They shouldn't have done that. They did a lousy job. So I won't use their names. But... They even have their numbers. They even have their numbers at a reasonably high. You're not too high. It'll never be too high. They got us into the Middle East. We got stuck in there for 20, 25 years. We spent $9 trillion and millions of people on both sides, millions of people killed. But together, we ended the NAFTA disaster, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the brand new USMCA, the best trade deal. It's the best trade deal ever made. I actually think the deal I made with China is better, but uh, we don't even talk about it because once COVID came in, that was a step too far for me. I just, I don't even talk about it much. But I took on the communist government, the Chinese government, and uh, we had the government of China. And I must tell you, I had a great relationship with President Xi until we came in, until uh, I heard about COVID, which was really, I always called it the China virus because I like accuracy. They weren't happy with that. But we like, don't we like accuracy? And until then, I had a great relationship with him. He's a very smart guy, very strong leader. Can you imagine him dealing with Biden? It's just the whole thing is so crazy. He probably thinks it's a setup. You know, when he meets with Biden, 
Biden leaves, he will where? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and he leaves. You know, when I do that, it's very dangerous for me because they're so dishonest. Like, sometimes I'll walk back, I'll, I'll imitate Biden, and I'll walk, like, into that wall of sorts. <laughs> and they'll show me on television. They'll say, see, Trump couldn't find the exit to the stage. And I do an imitation of it. I say, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And you never notice the way he points. He goes, but that usually means he wants to go that way. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll turn around. And then, and then Secret Service, by the way, Secret Service, they're unbelievable. The shit they have to put up with. But Secret Service is, and then you'll see this handsome, beautiful Secret Service guy come in. You say, why the hell isn't he president? That's it, right? You see this handsome, and they always grab him, right? They catch him, and they, you know, walk him off the stage. This is our president. We got a beauty. But I gave the farmers uh, billions and billions of dollars, but I also gave New England lobstermen and fishermen. I put them back in business, gave them billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. Crooked Joe Biden is waging war on our fishermen. And today, the Supreme Court is hearing a case on a Biden regulation, you know all about it, that requires New England fishermen to pay $700 a day. That sounds like a lot of money to me. $700. You know about that? $700 a day for your fishermen, Mr. Chairman. That's not, that's not acceptable. For a federal bureaucrat to ride in their boats, they want to have a federal bureaucrat ride in their boats every single time they go out to fish because they want them to fish in a certain area. Can you believe this? That will end on day one. Tell your fishermen friends, you know, they're too busy working right now. Biden wants fishermen to pay for a monitor to observe every move that they make and report back every week on a weekly basis to Washington, D.C. How bad is that? Think, I'm not a fisherman. I like fishing. I'm not a fisherman. But these guys work like hell. It's dangerous. It's rough. They got to go in those waters, that ship that's getting just decimated by some of the biggest, most vicious waves anywhere in the world. You know that. And they go out there and the wives say goodbye. They never know if they're going to even see them again. You know, sometimes they don't come back. You never see them again. Nobody knows what even happened. But uh, they want to put somebody on those boats, a monitor, and uh, probably a liberal guy from Washington, D.C., sitting on the boat. <laughs> And uh, to report them if they go a little bit out of bounds, you know, because I remember they had the 500 square miles of stuff, and I, un I ended it. But then they put it back in when they came. And uh, so many bad things they do. But can you imagine, just out of common sense, a monitor on a fishing boat? And it costs $700 a day. Isn't that just a terrible thing? Essentially, essentially, because how much, I don't think you make $700 a day. How can you make that much? Today, I pledge to New England's fishermen that when I take office, that rule is on day one, gone. It'll be gone, day one. And tonight, I'm also making another promise to protect Americans from government tyranny. As your president, I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency. Do you know about me? I didn't know you know so much. I'm very, well, New Hampshire, very smart people. Very, uh, very current. You know what they're doing. Such a currency would give a federal government, our federal government, the absolute control over your money. They could take your money. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even know it was gone. This would be a dangerous threat to freedom, and I will stop it from coming to America. You know, uh, last night, I don't know if you saw, just as with the election the night before, a guy who really did a great job, Vivek, you know? Ramishwami Vivek. I got a call just before I was going on. He said, would you please hold? I would like to come over and see you. We're in the same building right after the Iowa votes were in. Although it happened so fast, I was told at 10 o'clock you will know. So I, about 7, we got there at 7, but they said by 10 o'clock, because it's a different system, caucus, right? I don't know if you want caucus here. It's a much more complicated system. I'd relax. Just, just change your laws around here. Get your governor to do something for a change. But you know... It's a complicated system. So, but I was always told, you will know the outcome by 9.30 to 10 o'clock. So I made a very early speech to a lot of people. It was great. And these people had such a... And I'm walking off. It's about like 10 after 7. And they said to me, grab me on the stage just as I was... Congratulations, sir. You won. I said, won what? <laughs> it's like...
close to 7 o'clock. I said, one word. You just won the Iowa primary, you call it, the Iowa caucus. I said, how did I win the caucus? I just got here. <laughs> you know, the doors were still open to the army tank that I drive in. You know, we drive in, we have, we have windows that are like this thick. I've never seen anything like it. I call it an army tank. But we just... I used to drive a Rolls Royce, and now I drive in an army tank. But, you know, the army tank costs more money than the Rolls Royce. So, you know, a friend of mine said, you know, you have so many of those things. Uh, don't you like the Rolls Royce better? I said, well, actually, this is much more expensive than a Rolls Royce, if you want to. But, uh, no, I just got there, and they say, congratulations. I didn't know what they were talking about, because they say, how could it be over? But it was over very fast. And I said, we must have really swamped them to call it that early. But I was told that you had to wait till from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, but we did so well. And I think we're going to have the same result here. I really do. I think we're going to have the same. But we're also going to place strong protections to stop banks and regulators from trying to debank you from your, you know, your, your political beliefs, what they do. They want to debank you, and we're going to debank. Think of this. They want to take away your rights. They want to take away your country. The things you're doing, all electric cars, give me a break. If you want an electric car, good. But they don't go far. They're very expensive. They're going to be made in China. That's why I think I'm going to get the auto workers to vote for Trump. You know, we're having great, great talks. But think of what they want to do. They want to take away your rights. Upon taking office, I will also restore peace through strength. I will get that war in Ukraine settled so fast. It should have never happened. It never would have happened. And it didn't happen. People say, well, how do we know that? Actually, even Democrats say there's no way. Putin would have never done it. Also, energy was much lower, so he couldn't have afforded it. You know, he makes his money with oil, like others. But he makes his money with oil. Oil had $110, $111 a barrel, and he made a fortune. He made a fortune on a war that's very expensive. And uh, they're really doing a number right now on Ukraine. Look, it's a war machine. You know, that's a big war machine. And uh, it's very sad, but I will get that. I will get that straightened out very fast, very early. I think. I think I'll get that finished when I'm president-elect. I think I'll get it long, long before, long before I take the office. Once we have it, I'll get that. And Israel too. I hope it's going to be something's going to happen before. But that attack on Israel would have never ever happened. Iran was broke. They didn't have the money to give to Hamas or Hezbollah. And it would have never happened. I'm the only candidate who can make this promise. And this is a big promise, maybe the most important promise I can make. I will prevent World War III. You're closer to World War III right now than you've ever been. We have a man that can't even speak, and he's negotiating for us. And these people are not the right people. They're not people. They're not doing their job. They, I don't think they know how to do their job, in all fairness. I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every radical, out-of-control prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist, and reverse enforcement of the law. And I'm also going to indemnify all police officers. I just met a lot of you great police officers. And law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left politicians in our country they want to destroy our police and we're not going to let it happen they want to take away they want to take away their rights they want to if a policeman gets in trouble because he's stopping a crime they want to have him go out and hire his own lawyer it's not going to happen it's not going to happen we're going to straighten out the crime in our cities what's happened over the last few years is not even believable and in fact, we're going to do a big job in our cities. We're going to rebuild our cities, and we're going to rebuild them so that they're going to be crime-free. We're going to do what we have to do, and we're going to enforce our laws. That's another one. We can enforce those laws. Our police are incredible. They can do an incredible job, but we're going to enforce those laws. One other thing we're doing is Washington, D.C. This used to be a beautiful capital. Today, it's one of the most unsafe places you can go to anywhere on Earth but certainly in this country. People being shot every single day and killed every single day. Swastikas being emblazoned on the most beautiful Carrera marble columns that you've ever seen. And uh, graffiti all over the place. Uh, garbage on the roads and the highways coming in. When you look at presidents of other nations and prime ministers and kings and queens coming into Washington, D.C., and their cars are riding over garbage, and the median in between, you know, the metal that somebody made a fortune. I've never seen every place has it, and it's always broken, right? It's always broken. There's somebody got a lot of money to do that, but you ever notice that, Chairman? They're always broken. They're falling down all the time, but it's disgusting. They're all 
graffiti laden. They're bent. They're terrible. The asphalt hasn't been repaved for many years. And you're riding into the United States of America, and you're seeing, and they have slums. They have slums. We have to take out the slums. We're going to take out the slums. We're going to treat people nicely, but we have to take out the slums. We can't let homeless stay in the middle of our magnificent parks under the Washington Monument and other places. We're going to clean up Washington, D.C., and we're going to make it a crime-free zone. There's not going to be any crime. We're going to have laws, but we're going to have to take it over. We're going to federalize it. We're going to take it over. We're going to run it, and we're going to run it properly. We're going to run it very, very strongly, and uh, there's not going to be people shot. People come in from... Uh, your state, they want to go see Washington. So they come in from New Hampshire. They walk down the road. They end up getting shot. And uh, it's a very dangerous place right now. We're going to take it back, and we're going to get rid of the crime, and we're going to fix it up, clean it up, and uh, we're going to make it the most beautiful capital in the world and the safest capital in the world. We're going to do it very quickly, too. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and any other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. You won't have one penny. And who can believe I have to even say this is so ridiculous? I will keep men out of women's sports. Is that okay? Who? <laughs> Can you believe? And something I did better than anybody, and it was under siege, and it still is, I will uphold your great Second Amendment, which to you means more than to most. And will protect innocent life, and will restore free speech. And I will secure our elections. We will have the most secure. They are unsecure. They are in terrible shape. Our goal will be one-day voting with paper ballots, as I said, and voter ID. But until then, we have to win. We have to win in November, but we have to win coming up. Think of it, next Tuesday, we have to win. And we have to win in a resounding fashion. I said to Iowa, they got so sick and tired of me. I started off by saying, listen, we're going to win, but you got to win by big numbers. It, if we're going to win like a close race, it doesn't set the example that we hear. So even if you think, and I joked, I said, if your husband's sick as a dog, get him out of bed. Darling, Jack, Jack! Yes, yes, I'm so sick, darling. Jack, get your ass out of bed. You're voting for our president. Yes, darling. It doesn't matter as long as he gets that vote. If he kicks the bucket after that, it's okay. He, he served his country. I'll write him a letter, Jack. Thank you for your service, Jack. Thank you for your service. Well, write him a letter, Jack. Thank you for your service. No, they got to vote. Everybody has to vote because we have to show, not against these two candidates because they're, they're, uh, pretty far down. But really, we have to show the radical left crazy people, the lunatics that we have to deal with. And hopefully someday they'll come into the fold. But right now, they're not in the fold. And they were in the fold. I'll tell you, they were in the fold. And during my term, just prior to COVID coming in, and it was even successful. You know, I handed them over. The stock market was more successful. It was higher than it was just prior to COVID coming in. Nobody can believe it, the job we did. We never got enough credit. We got great credit on economy, great, great credit on the military, great credit on foreign. We did the Abraham Accords, all the things. We never got credit for what we did with COVID. Nobody knew anything about it. We did a great job. We never got the credit for it, but that's okay. But if you take a look at what we did, we're the most successful country. Think of it. The most successful country. And nobody's ever seen. And I will tell you that people were coming to see me, radical left people. I call them radical left. And they wanted to make deals. They wanted to be together. And people were asking me, do you think the country will ever unify? Success will unify our country. I've seen it. Success is going to unify our country. And you've heard me say this. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction or damage to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. Nobody, nobody has done this kind of damage to this country. You could take the 10 worst presidents, and it's true. I mean, these millions and millions of people that are coming in, it's so horrible. So if you want to save America, then this Tuesday, January 23rd, you must go out and vote for Trump. And as I said earlier, it's, if you have any questions, N-H, you know what that stands for, New Hampshire. See, Biden couldn't tell you that. If he said any, what does that stand for? 
NH, New Hampshire. It stands for New Hampshire. The worst is when he says, it's great to be in Florida today. No, Joe, it's very nasty out there. It's not Florida. <laughs> NH.DonaldJTrump.com. You do that. So in conclusion, from Manchester to Meredith, from Waterville Valley to Mount Washington, from Plymouth to Portsmouth, you inherit the legacy of red-blooded New Hampshire patriots, and you really are incredible patriots who lived by that immortal motto, live free or die. That's pretty cool. Well, we'll get it done without the dying part, but you know, we don't want the dying part, but it's, you're willing to do that if you have to. We stand on, that's right. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up the skyscrapers, those big, gorgeous skyscrapers. We're going to rebuild those cities. Remember what I said? Won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America the single greatest nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in decline. So sad to see it, but we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, willpower, and strength. Think of it, a nation that's lost its confidence. It's a, it's a horrible, horrible statement. Who would ever think that we would say that? But we are. We're a, a nation that no longer has confidence. We lose at everything. We're a nation that has quite simply lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it is hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. You know, our country needs saving. We've never been in this position. And remember what I said about World War III. We have never been so close to World War III as we are right now. You look at what's going on in the Middle East. You look at what's going on with Ukraine and Russia. You look at what's going on. We have never been. And the, the power of the weaponry is beyond anything you can even imagine. This is an army tanks going back and forth, as I say, back and forth, shooting at each other. These are weapons of mass destruction, the likes of which the world has never seen before. I know because I was very familiar with them. I had to renovate and rebuild them, and I hated doing it, but we spent so much time, effort, and money on our nuclear stockpile, and I hated to do it because I know the power. The power is so horrible. We had no choice, but it's so horrible. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. 2024 is our final battle with you at my side. We will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers. And we have to get them out, the warmongers, the people that take us into wars, into countries that nobody ever heard of and don't even want us. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. They truly hate our country. That's what I think is happening at the border. We will rout the fake news media, and we will evict Crooked Joe Biden, the worst, by, or the worst president in the history of the United States, and it's not even close. We will rout Crooked Joe Biden from the White House on Election Day 2024. You know that we have a president who's got, gotten quite old right now. Jimmy, right? President Jimmy Carter, and he's happy because his presidency is now considered brilliant <laughs> by comparison to Joe Biden. Considered brilliant. It's considered a brilliant presidency by comparison to this guy. The great silent majority is rising like never before, and under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will never, ever be forgotten again. And it wasn't for four years that I was there. Just the opposite. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great 
again. Thank you very much, New Hampshire. God bless you. God bless you, New Hampshire. Thank you.